All right, so I've done quite a bit of research here to make sure that everything that I'm building is going to be legal and that I'm not going to have any kind of problems in the future. And I'll share with you what I found out so far and what else it is that I have left to, to kind of look up. I uh, got a bunch of different questions over here that uh, I've been trying to figure out how to get some answers to. Question number one that I've had here is whether I require a permit or not. And I, I don't think that I do because when I go to the website of my municipality, I see that there is a uh, page that tells me that what I'm looking to build here is called what's called an accessory structure. And accessory structures apparently uh, do not need a building permit. So they answer that question right away over here. And they say, you need a building permit for all construction over 10 square meters or 107 square feet. And so as long as I build something that is under 107 square feet, I'm not going to need a permit, which answers the first major question that I have. And so what that basically means for me is, is that my goal now is to stay under this 107 square feet so that uh, I can just keep things really, really simple. And the configurations that I'm looking at to make sure that that happens right now is basically, uh, I can basically go with this, like a rectangular shape, which is an eight by 13.3, you know, as close as I want to get here, I got uh, eight feet by 13.3 feet will basically just take me about to 106 uh, and almost a half square feet, which is under getting very close to 107 square feet here is around a nine by 11 or 11 and a half or so. And then if I do 10 by 10 and a half or so, I can I can still stay under that 107 square feet. So I'm very comfortable with that. I think that there's going to be enough space in there for me to work. So I'm not going to be spending you know a whole lot of time in there. Maybe just two three hours a day just doing uh, some office work. Some days I might be there for six or seven hours for for the longer days, but. For the most part, I'll just be doing some office work there. So I don't think uh, anything more than 107 square feet is going to be a problem. And I think a lot of uh, what's going to make a big difference is on what kind of a structure that I build, how much light I get, you know, how bright is it in there? Do I feel like spending, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight hours in there? Um, and so space is one factor there, but a lot of the design work that uh, I put in is also gonna is also gonna affect that. So I'm comfortable with this. I don't think I don't think I need a whole lot more space than that just uh, just for a desk and a TV screen and a couple of monitors and stuff like that. So I think we're good. So the other major question that I had was, um, so we're good on the permit, I believe. On the height issue, I basically have to. Uh, I didn't couldn't find anything on the website over here, so they talk about 107 square feet, and I looked up and down, and I couldn't find anything regarding height. So I basically just shot an email over to them, and I basically said, "Look, I said I, I see on the website that we I can build an accessory structure of 107 square feet without a permit. Are there any height restrictions that I have to uh, stay under when building something like this?" You know, I live on such and such a street, which I believe is residential, and I double checked it in the actual documents. I've gone through a lot of the zoning bylaws and everything else. I'll share that in a, in a separate video, but for sure, I'm in a residential uh, neighborhood, and that's it, there's in that it has an actual name, like it's they call it residential or something. But uh, basically, I told them that the website doesn't list any specifics about height restrictions, and they came back to me and said that the height restriction is three meters, which when I look up three meters into feet, it's about nine in, it's almost 10 square feet, but uh, just to stay safe, going to probably stay well under, uh, well under nine and a half square feet. And what that means is uh, one of the other things they said is that they're going to be measuring this from the lowest point of grade around the proposed shed to the midpoint of the roof. And what that means, what I think that means, I've done a, done a quick little sketch up here, and I'll share this the details of this diagram with you guys later on. But what I think that means is that if I lay down a concrete slab here that is basically at ground level, right? So there you can kind of imagine that the ground is like at this level here. And so the, this this area here is all covered up by dirt, but the uh, concrete slab is going to basically just kind of be at the same level, more or less, as the ground. What I think they mean by this uh, measured from the lowest point of grade around the proposed shed to the midpoint of the roof, what I think they mean by that is, is that basically from the lowest point of the grade, I think, is this line right here. 
and you can basically take that all the way up to the roof. This would be essentially the top of the roof. This would be the bottom of the roof and the midpoint of the roof would be around somewhere around here, I believe. So I'm going to kind of verify that with the city. I'm going to see if I can send over a couple of the drawings and just kind of show them what it is that I'm trying to do. I might actually just go into the office and show them what it is that I'm trying to do and um, run that by them just to make sure that I understand what that actually means, right? From the lowest point of the grade to the proposed shed. And again, I'm doing a lot more research than a lot of other people would because just because I don't wanna to have to redo it. That's my that's my biggest concern. And, uh, and as I said in the last video is that I've heard some horror stories here. So I think a lot of people probably wouldn't go through this much headache, but I'm gonna go through this. And what I'll actually do is I'll let you guys know if you guys are interested in other municipalities, once I learn how to do this for, for myself, I can do it for other areas too. So. If anybody's interested in that, just send me the, the name of your municipality or your, um, I think in, in the US there's, uh, that's probably done at the county level, it might be done at like the city level. And uh, I can start to do some of the research because a lot of the rules between Canada and the US are gonna be the same. They're probably gonna be the same in, in a lot of the English speaking countries. So I'm gonna do all this research right now uh, just to make sure I'm on the legit side. I'll do it for you guys too if, if you need it. But for me right now, they're saying three meters, and I think that that's what they mean. I'll clarify that with them. Uh, the number of structures, um, I just thought I'd ask them, so I wrote back and said, am I able to build more than one shed in the yard, or is there a limit to the number of accessory structures the municipality allows? And they said, yes, you will be able to build more than one accessory structure. You just would need to be permitted, uh, you would not be permitted to exceed the total accessory structure area, which is 107 square feet. And this is where it threw me off a little bit and I had to start doing a lot more research. It says, or exceed the maximum permitted lot coverage specified in our zoning bylaws. And this is where I'm at right now, where I'm essentially trying to figure out what that means. And I think I've kind of pinned it down. I've started to look at the uh, I've started to look at the different zoning bylaws and uh, looking at a lot of the other documents that uh, that they have published on the site there, see if I can pull it out. And I found this section that talks about the lot coverage area, the maximum, uh, but I don't think I found the right place here. I'm going to keep on doing a little bit more research on this to see, uh, to see exactly uh, what I need to find out about that. But this is kind of where I'm at with respect to my research here. My next big job here is essentially to figure out what they mean by maximum permitted lot coverage. I think I think it means that I can't have, let's say, my lot is, you know, you know, at the, you know, five thousand square feet. I think what they mean is that the structure area, total accessory structure area, there's some sort of a maximum that I have to figure out what that is. And if I can't find it in the documentation, I'll just send them another email and try to find it out from my house, uh, try to find it out uh, from them directly. Got a bunch of other questions here that, a um, bunch of other questions that I'm gonna get down to, but this is essentially the way that I'm gonna start just making sure that I'm kind of on the right side of the rules here so that uh, so that we're, we're uh, building with some confidence. Um, and in the meantime, basically what we did is we essentially started to, clear out the backyard uh, with the shed that we had looked at. Uh, originally, we started to take it apart, it took us about an hour and a half or so to just go through the entire process of removing the shed. It was a lot more work than I thought it was gonna be. I thought, you know, maybe I'd just be able to just kind of kick it down and pull it aside, but shed was pretty, it was pretty sturdy and it had a lot of screws that we had to undo uh, to, to get it to actually start to uh, fall apart. And then once that happened, it started to just kind of drag it away and uh, put it to the side. And then I started to kind of clean up the, the, the ground underneath it. The ground underneath it basically had uh, had a lot of bricks and it had a lot of uh, had a plastic covering and everything else that I needed to clear up. But we essentially ended up in a place where I uh, believe that given given the numbers that I have, given the numbers that we're looking at here, the options I think are going to be essentially for me to start to build it this way, right, which is my preferred option. But the problem with building it as with option number two, essentially, if I if I want to go with a rectangle structure here, right, if I go back to uh, if I go back to my document where I'm tracking these items, if I want to build either an eight by 13 or a nine by 12 and a half, what I'm going to have to do here is build some sort of a rectangle. But when I measured it out, 
in the uh, yard after clearing the the shed i realized that if i if i want to kind of build it the way that i want rectangle going this way i'm probably going to have to uproot this tree i'm probably going to have to uproot this tree and there's a good chance that i'm going to have to uproot this tree and these these two trees they look a little bit small in the pictures here but they're but they're pretty thick and uh again i don't even know if the if the municipality or the city will even let me remove those trees because you know i think some cities have rules around that so if I want to kind of get away from having to deal with all of that, I might just build the accessory structure going this way. And what that would do is basically it would give me enough space on this side. It would give me enough space over here uh, so that I can essentially build this out without having to worry about the essentially the roots of the trees kind of poking through the concrete after a while because um, these tree roots here are actually pretty strong and they go quite a bit of ways down here probably going to have to cut some of that stuff out. But um, I think that this may be the option. I'm going to start to consider it a little bit more to see, if, you know, maybe I'll do a little bit more research to see if I can actually remove these trees because I really do want to kind of build it this way. But um, but if, uh, if it becomes too much work, I'm just going to kind of give in and just uh, build it this way around so I don't have to mess with any of these trees. One of the other rules that the city or the municipality sets aside here is, is that I have to make sure I'm minimum of two feet away from, from this fence and a minimum of two feet away from this fence. And so these lines that I've drawn out are about two and a half feet just to be a little bit more careful. So this is what it's looking at, right? Uh, looking like right now. I think we're uh, the next step here is to start talking to some of the concrete guys to see what it would take for us to lay down a concrete slab of. Um, I think the concrete slab is essentially going to have to be a little bit, a little bit bigger because if I look at my documents here, right? If I look at my the concrete slab is going to have to be. Um, it's not going to be 8 by 13 because the way that I've started to sketch it up is that the 8 by 13 is essentially just going to give me what's under the accessory structure, but I kind of want a little bit of a concrete uh, stepping stone here, a bit of a little patio, not really, but you know, if I'm going in and out here, I just want to make sure that I have some concrete here. So um, basically what it looks like I may have to do here is that um, I may have to build a concrete slab that is about 12 by about 11 and a half or so. But again, this is a very, very rough sketch. I'm going to keep on working on this a little bit more and uh, get the, the get the dimensions worked out. And I think that is the next step is to, is to kind of just make sure I have exactly what I need here. Call up the concrete guys and start to get some estimates on what it's going to take for us to put a concrete slab down and uh, essentially start planning out the rest of the building. Uh, what do I want this building to look like? Um, I'm thinking I want a lot more windows uh, either in the front here or if I lay it on its side, I probably want the window to be uh, a nice big window over here so that I can get a lot of sunlight from the east coming in. Uh, but again, a lot of these things, I'm gonna have to take it one step at a time and I'll continue to share this with you guys as I go along. Stick around with me. If you have any questions, post them. The more I learn, the more I'll try to teach you guys. And again, like I said, I think a lot of the municipalities and a lot of the city rules are very similar to each other. So a lot of what I'm learning here about my municipality is probably going to carry over to what it is that you need to do. Eventually, I'll probably put up like a blog post or something with step-by-step -step instructions on, on what to do. But in, until I can learn it myself, I will not be able to put that up. So I'll uh, keep on posting more of the videos and I'll uh, post the next, next one soon.